from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Mind. All right, it's Thursday evening. Hi, everybody. Rory Johnston in the Open Line chair tonight here on News Channel 5 Plus. The phone lines are officially open. 737 Plus, you regular uh, viewers know that already. We appreciate you tuning in and calling in. We're going to talk about an important topic tonight. You've heard all about it recently, and that is all of these shipping delays and the supply chain disruptions. Of course, it's made headlines all around the country. And as the Christmas holiday season approaches, we want to talk about what kind of impact that could have. And there have been some recent changes from the Biden administration that we're going to talk about just in the past 24 hours or so about trying to address this issue. We want to welcome our guest. His name is Steve Ferreira. He is the CEO of a group called Ocean Audit. Steve joins us from Boston tonight. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, Rory, it's my honor to be here today. Uh, congratulations on your show and looking forward to a great segment. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Yeah, and hopefully we can answer some questions, and I always have questions. First of all, we'll just start with you. Um, what is Ocean Audit? Tell me what exactly that is and what you do. Sure. I founded Ocean Audit as a uh, global ocean freight refund recovery consultancy. That means that what I do is I go to the Fortune 100, 500, Fortune 1000, and believe it or not, Rory, over 12% of ocean freight invoicing is overcharged or overbilled. So Ocean Audit identifies overbilling and recovers and redeems refunds back to large retailers, wholesalers, chemical exporters. It's a ocean freight post audit recovery for the global trade. So you, uh, you know, if I'm the head of a, a big company, uh, I would definitely like your services because, you know, 12% may not sound like a lot, it's, but with a big company, the amount of money, the expenditures that they spend on freight and shipping, you can save them a lot of money. Right, well, keep in mind, it's not even just uh, savings. Uh, the American government, the uh, Federal Maritime Commission polices ocean freight shipping, and they allow for a three-year retroactive recovery of overcharges from ocean freight. So for example, uh, there's one major retailer that I recently recovered over $8 million for. And uh, that was just a fantastic refund because the CFO is then able to use that money to fund other supply chain expenditures. Wow. Okay, so how does, how, where do you even start? How do you track this and audit these shipments? Well, one of the interesting things about maritime in the United States is that every container that comes in or out of the USA is actually physically cataloged by U.S. Customs. Many uh, American, uh, the American public uh, and even importers and exporters are unaware of the level of detail that their pr proprietary supply chain data is being cataloged. Now, there's a way to opt out and keep your data private but it still doesn't minimize or detract from the ability to get the client a refund. Right. So one of the great uh, opportunities that I've done as a uh, CEO is I've pioneered a technique to read these custom manifests to help me identify the best opportunities to solve a client's problem. Right. Now, when you say proprietary, I mean, what could be proprietary uh, about the contents of a shipping container? You, you raise a great point. There may be a prototype television set. Ah, okay. There may be a new test vehicle that one of the big uh, automotive companies is importing. There's a lot of detail. It may even be something about uh, you know Afghanistan troop movements because the U.S. government uses ocean freight. Wow. So yeah, there has to be a balance between any country that's welcoming in, bringing in freight from internationally, of course wants to know in, at least generally what's what's in the crate what's coming in so it's not illegal but the companies need some protection as well for you know their intellectual material yeah remember a lot of this uh, started in terms of uh, visibility when uh, uh, president trump was in office and introduced uh, the so-called trump tariffs out of china where the chinese merchandise coming in certain merchandise was taxed or tariffed 25% of the value. 
So obviously the government has full visibility on what materials are coming in. And by federal law, the government has to make those manifests available to certain members of the press and public that have the tools and ability to read the data. It's a, it's a slippery slope. The data is very complex, but that's one of the advantages that I bring right. to my clientele, knowing how to read that data. Fascinating. Um, so we, we're definitely gonna get into more detail here about w what's happening right now with the supply chain and, and shipping and, and all of that. Uh, 737 plus, by the way, if you'd like to call in with a question, uh, phone lines are open. But I wanna uh, keep on this, Steve, and ask you about um, where that maybe people don't understand what's involved. Let's say that we have a product that is made in a factory in China and what's involved to get that product, you know, here to maybe the stores of Wal uh, the shelves in a Walmart or a Target. Uh, take us through kind of the steps as to how that happens. Uh, I love the question. Uh, I think the, to put it in perspective, we, uh, we have to do a uh, one year ago scenario and we have to do a today scenario. Okay. So one year ago to, to get the product from factory on ship across the Pacific Ocean to LA, to Chicago or, or Nashville or Chattanooga, you know, basically you'd be looking at a you know, six, five to seven week, five to eight week cycle. Now in this, what I term container getting environment, that cycle is somewhere be between, uh, could be upwards between nine to uh, 16 weeks, nine to 17 weeks. It's really magnified itself because of the slowdown in the process. Right. So the most important thing is clients are having difficulty securing container space because the ocean freight vendors tend to, so to speak, artificially control capacity. And when that happens, rates go sky high sure. as we've seen uh, right now that we're and experiencing. I almost, uh, I really like seeing uh, these stories because we actually see video of these uh, cargo ships uh, unloading in LA or Long Beach, which I know are two of the biggest ports out in California. Um, and it kind of gives people a visual of what's involved and just how many containers these cargo ships can hold. They're lifted off, they're, they're placed uh, up on the dock. I'm sure that's when there's some kind of registration or checking. And then they literally are put right on, to, there, there are trucks, tra you know, tractor trailers, a lot of them, uh, and put onto the trucks and off they go, correct? Well, the, the, the cycle, as you described, operationally is pretty true to form. A ship comes in, it's offloaded, there's chassis, there's a truck, the chassis is the wheels that mm -hmm. the container go, goes on. The problem is, is that there's not enough of them right now. That's right. one of the things that's causing the backlog of, say, 60 or 70 ships sitting outside LA right now. And that's the big story that right now yeah. the media is focused on. But there is a backstory to it, of course. Okay, yeah, so let's let's go back a little bit to the very beginning of this pandemic, almost two years ago now, hard to believe, but let's say the beginning of 2020 when we realized that this uh, virus was spreading and things started to, you know, the domino effect shut down. From your perspective uh, and your expertise, what were your concerns initially when you saw this happening? That we weren't going to be able to move enough uh, uh, personal protective gear uh, uh, from Asia to right. the USA. And that's one of the first things that we started to track is we started to track the uh, amount of hand sanitizer and, uh, and vinyl uh, uh, latex gloves coming in to see if we could, uh, uh, if the manufacturing cycle would be able to ramp up and get a cadence going. Unfortunately, it wasn't because obviously the virus affected not only China, but of course, the yeah. global. Yeah, and fast forward to today, now we're in this situation and we're gonna kinda talk about all the in-between and get this backstory coming up. We're gonna take our first break. We wanna hear from you uh, viewers out there. 737 plus is the phone number. And uh, maybe you're frustrated. Uh, we all know there, there's a lack of products. We're waiting, you order something online, whether it's a big appliance or maybe something smaller. and. You know, this just requires a lot of patience, but maybe hear some of your stories about how long you've had to wait and how you're planning for the holidays because it's around the corner. All right, we're gonna come back with our guest, more open line right after this.